Thank you. So my name is Rashan. I'm a PhD student at Monash and Safer Care. And today I just want to briefly reflect on some of the challenges Victorian maternity services face in their drive to detect and manage the growth restricted fetus. So for a long time, we've known that detection of fetal growth restriction is incredibly difficult. And there's been many studies that's been published on this, with most estimating the antenatal detection rate of FGR to be somewhere between 30 and 50%. And this is perhaps one of the key reasons driving the recent push towards increasing FGR awareness and detection over the last decade or so. If we can detect the FGR baby antenatally, we can reduce their risk of stillbirth four to five fold. In 2015, there were two papers published on this topic that received quite a bit of attention. The first was a paper published in The Lancet that questioned whether routine third trimester ultrasound screening was an effective screening method for detecting small for gestational age babies, a proxy measure for um, FGR. And the study showed a tripling in the detection rate of SGA babies, but for every additional SGA baby correctly identified by ultrasound, an additional two results were false positives, uh, a clue to the potential unintended harm involved if we were to overuse ultrasound. The second paper was published in the British Journal of ONG that spoke to the detection rates of FGR in a French population. And this was a retrospective cohort study looking at about 14,000 singleton births to explore the relationship between antenatal suspicion of FGR and actual birth weight. And was it, what is expected is that a large proportion of babies suspected of FGR antenatally would be small or SGA. And what the study found was that about 50% of infants suspected of FGI antenatally had an actual birth weight above the 10th centile, i.e. a normally grown baby. And further to this, uh, if a fetus was suspected of FGI, it, it was more likely to undergo provider-initiated delivery, regardless if actual birth weight was above or below the 10th centile. So these studies bring to the forefront the balancing act involved in FGR detection. We want to improve our detection of FGR babies while simultaneously not suspect FGR in non-FGR babies. And today we ask, how is Victoria doing in respect to this challenge? So in 2010, the PSPI introduced the severe FGI indicator that was discussed previously. That was a surrogate measure for FGR detection. And the indicator it measures the proportion of all severely growth-restricted babies delivered at or after 40 weeks gestation. And a severely growth-restricted baby is one with a birth weight below the third centile. So the rationale is that a baby with a birth weight below the third centile would be widely recognized as being growth-restricted and needing delivery prior to 40 weeks. And ideally, this percentage that the, uh, that the indicator reports should be 0%. That is to say, all severely growth-restricted babies should be delivered prior to 40 weeks. And for those who followed the indicator over the years and tracked its progress, we've seen a very purposeful and intentional focus towards delivering these babies earlier prior to 40 weeks. The percentage of severe FGR babies undelivered by 40 weeks gestation has steadily decreased from about 40% in 2010 to now about th less than 30% in 2017, a relative risk reduction of about 30%. And we believe that the public, just the public reporting of this data helped to encourage this improvement. Now the reason why we want to deliver these babies earlier is because we would expect it to improve perinatal outcomes for these babies. So this is a figure of data going back all the way to 2000, and in the red we have perinatal mortality rate for all severe FGR babies per 1,000 births using the left-hand axes. So we can see that perinatal mortality rate for all severe FGR babies has bounced around a bit, and if we run a trend analysis on analysis on it, it would say that perinatal mortality rate for severe FGR babies is decreasing over this time period. And we think that this decrease is related to the earlier delivery that's occurring. But at the same time, this next line represents NICU admissions as a percentage for severe FGR babies using the right hand axis. So in 2000, about 1% of severe FGR babies were admitted to NICU, and now it's about 3%, a tripling in this percentage. And we can posit many different reasons for this. Maybe it's due to changes in NICU admission criteria over the years. Maybe it's due to lower thresholds to admit to NICU. Or maybe the earlier delivery of severe FGR pregnancies is making it more likely for these babies to require higher levels of pediatric care. 
We also wanted to ask how many normally grown babies above the 10th centile do we need to deliver earlier to ensure that a severely growth restricted baby is delivered prior to 40 weeks gestation. So in the Victorian perinatal data collection, there's a specific ICD-10 code called 0365 that represents a fetus that is suspected of FGR antenatally. So we can search for this code throughout the data sets. We can see if a fetus was suspected of FGR antenatally, and we can see if suspicion of FGR was listed as an indication for iatrogenic delivery, either induction or prelabor cesarean section. So this next figure is showing us the number of babies iatrogenically deliver, delivered via induction or prelabor cesarean section for the indication of suspected FGR prior to 40 weeks. So this number has skyrocketed, particularly after 2010 when the PSPI indicator was first introduced. And we asked ourselves, what are the actual birth weight centiles for these babies? So in this next figure, we have the actual birth weight centiles for babies iatrogenically delivered for suspected FGR prior to 40 weeks. So this first line represents babies iatrogenically delivered for suspected FGR with an actual birth weight below the third centile. So these would be babies correctly identified as severely growth restricted antenatally and delivered prior to 40 weeks. And so here we can see a trend towards correctly suspecting FGR and more babies below the third centile and delivering them prior to 40 weeks. In 2000, about 200 babies, now it's above 400 babies. And we can see a little bit of a spike around 2011, 2012, after the PSPI indicator was first introduced. This next line represents pregnancies delivered for suspected FGR with an actual birth weight between the third and 10th centile, which has increased from about 200 babies to now about 1,000 cases in 2017. So there's been a huge increase in the number of babies within this birth weight centile group, again spiking from around 2011, 2012, after the PSPI indicator was first published. And I think most would deem this somewhat acceptable that these babies might also be growth restricted, particularly those around the fourth or fifth centile and need delivery prior to 40 weeks. And these final two lines represents pregnancies delivered for suspected FGR and have an actual birth weight between the 10th and 25th centile and above the 25th centile. So these babies would largely be normally grown babies delivered earlier for the indication of suspected FGR. What we can see is that since 2010, there's been a huge increase in normally grown babies undergoing iatrogenic delivery be uh, before 40 weeks because they were suspected of FGR. And as a combined total, it's increased from 300 babies to 1,600 babies now. And instead of absolute numbers, we can look at this as a percentage. So this figure is showing us the proportion of babies, proportion of babies iatrogenically delivered for suspected FGR prior to 40 weeks by birth weight centile. So in the black, we have the proportion that had an actual birth weight below the third centile. In the blue, between the third and tenth. In the red, 10 to 25th. And in the green, above the 25th. So if we just focus on the black, we see that the proportion of babies we deliver iatrogenically for suspected FGR and have an actual birth weight below the third centile has dropped from 30% to 15%. So delivery before 40 weeks for the indication of suspected FGR has become less specific to babies affected, actually affected by severe FGR. And at the same time, the proportion being delivered for suspected FGR you know, above the 10th centile has increased from 40% to 50%. We can also look at the NICU admissions for this red group, for these babies that were delivered for suspected FGR and had an actual birth weight above the 10th centile. So here we can see a doubling or tripling in the percentage admitted to NICU. So while we are detecting and delivering more severe FGR pregnancies earlier, it has come alongside increasing rates of intervention in non-FGR pregnancies. And we can raise the question, will any improvement made in our FGR detection always be inherently accompanied by unintended harm to normally grown babies who are delivered earlier because they are suspected of FGR? And if the answer to this is yes, then how aggressively should we aim to detect the severe FGR baby? Um, one way we can answer this is to look at the perinatal mortality rates for severe FGR babies. So over the whole 2000 to 2017, there were 30, 31,000 babies who had a birth weight below the third centile, and so were severely growth restricted. And we can split this uh, pr this um, number of babies into two groups. Group one, which is babies with the birth weight below the third centile that were never suspected of FGI antenatally, 
and babies. Group two, which is severe birth weight, babies with birth weight below the third centile that were suspected of FGR antenatally. And to be suspected of FGR, you had to have the 0365 ICD-10 code. And if we look at the absolute numbers in each group, we see that 22,000 of the 31,000 babies with the birth weight below the third centile were not suspected of FGR antenatally, and this is about 70%. Um, now, we asked about the perinatal mortality rate in each group, and in severe FGR babies that were never suspected of FGR, the perinatal mortality rate was 21 deaths per 1,000 births, and in severe FGR babies that were suspected of FGR, the uh, perinatal mortality rate was 8.5 deaths per 1,000 births. So we can clearly see the importance of detecting severe FGR and how it can improve our perinatal mortality rates. A further division is severe FGR babies that were not only suspected of FGR, but were also iatrogenically delivered for the indication of suspected FGR, which, rep which represents about 6,000 of those 9,500 babies. And in, again, in this group, perinatal mortality drops a further, um, a further drop to 4.5 deaths per 1,000 births. So again, we can clearly see the importance of detecting FGR and detecting severe FGR and how it can improve perinatal mortality rates. So to conclude, there seems to be an intrinsic cost or drawback to detecting FGR. While detection is becoming more and more sensitive, it is also becoming less and less specific to babies actually affected by severe FGR. And the question in front of us is, does increased focus on FGR detection bring more harm than good? And the answer to this would depend on the balance between any mortality and morbidity benefits that arise from identification of the severely growth-restricted baby versus any harm caused by identification of false positives. And perhaps any gains made by improving our detection of FGR will always be partially offset by unintended harm to normally grown babies that are delivered earlier for suspected FGR. As for the future of this PSBI indicator, we need to think about its feasibility, the feasibility of reporting it and interpreting it on the backdrop of trends towards all babies being delivered prior to 40 weeks. Will any future improvement seen in your hospitals or seen in Victoria um, or seen in the indicator be due to clinicians specifically intervening and delivering severe FGR babies earlier or be due to an, due to an overall non-specific increase in earlier delivery for all babies? And finally, we are now starting a new project um, investigating the reasons why these babies are being admitted to NICU and trying to see if it is actually related to the earlier delivery we are seeing or due to something else. So thank you very much.